Hello and welcome back, cool cats and groovy chicks. Here we are at the Jazz Ranch, and things are really fine. We got Dizzy Gillespie in the background, and I'm welcoming you back to another video, and this one on a very unique jazz scale that we're going to talk about later. Anyway, um, you know, times are pretty good for me. Anyway, I'm, and I'm sorry. Hello. You know, we've been through some bad times, and I can remember years ago when I lived in an apartment. And I lived in a lot of them in a lot of different places. And I can remember practicing one particular day, and there was a knock at the door. I opened the door, and it turned out it was the piano tuner. I said, what are you doing here? I didn't call you. He said, no, the neighbors downstairs called me. So that's what you got to deal with. Anyway, I wish you well, and I hope you'll uh, stay with me now when we talk about some unique jazz scales. Here we go. Okay, so I want to hip you to one of the most fascinating scales I've learned, and I've used it for many years. And it's really a diminished scale, but it also acts as a dominant, altered dominant scale. So I like to use it both ways, within diminished runs or within dominant seventh runs. And what it is, now I'm going to talk about it from the point of view of a dominant seventh. So we'll just start with the key of C or the scale of C, the C major. And we know the C major scale, or a C major diatonic scale is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. So it's like two whole steps, a half, then three whole steps and a half. So now this particular scale, I'm going to play it on a C7 chord now. It goes up a half step, then up a whole step, then up a half step, then up a whole step, then up a half step, then a whole step, then a half step, then a whole step. So you can see that it's alternating between half steps and whole steps, and it's symmetrical. Because it has that formula to it, it's symmetrical in the same way that a chromatic scale is symmetrical. In other words, every interval in the scale is equal, half steps, or a whole step scale is symmetrical in that every interval in the scale is whole steps. This one, it alternates between whole steps and half steps. So like, here we go now again, half step, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole. Now that fits a C7 chord or a C dominant 7. How does it alter the chord? Or how does it pick up things that have been altered within the major scale. That's the important thing to understand. And what it does is creates this fascinating harmonic um, relationship to the chord by adding these particular intervals, the flat nine. Now we're going to build from root, third, fifth, flat seven up here to octave, flat nine, sharp nine, which is the same as the flat three, but it's a sharp nine now because we're building a above the flat 7 here. There's the tenth of the third, sharp 11, which is the same as the flat 5. Then we call it the twelfth, but I call that the fifth, and that the sixth or the thirteenth, and the flat 7 there now. Now if you did that, it would be a flat 13, but now we're just going to go so eighth, flat 9, sharp 9, 10 or third, sharp 11, 5, 13, flat 7, and root. Now that's the scale. Now this can lead to fascinating things. Because you can play all these interesting sort of uh, intervals within it, like a... like that, or... or how about this? See, so like, there's hundreds of them. I mean, I'll write some of them out for you, but like, how about... How about that one? This will change your life. I mean, this one scale will change your life, I guarantee it. Now, the other thing is that's so fascinating is now, there are actually three families because these scales overlap. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is now within C7, if we go up a minor third to an E flat seven, it's the same exact scale. It's just starting on a different note. It's starting on E flat, but it is actually all the same notes are in E flat altered dominant scale. Now, if we go up another third to a G flat seven, 
it's the same scale, right? So that, that's within the family. If we go up to an A7, now it's the same scale. We're just starting on a different note. So it's like a mode of the scale. That just means we're starting on a different note of the scale, but it, it still is the same scale. The same notes are contained within it. So now for all of those chords, I can use that scale and do all the permutations and all those licks within it. So now, I say the C7, so now I go to the F, F7, I go to the G7. I'm reducing it down to three scales, the C, the F, and the G, because they're the easiest ones to understand because C has no sharps or flats. F has one flat, G has one sharp. So now when I go to the F scale, it's this. So now the A flat would be the same scale. And then up and up, the B would be the same scale. Did I get that right? I didn't get that right either. There we go. Then the, the D would be the same. Okay, so now I probably lost you on that one. Anyway, the G7 is the same thing. So same thing happens. G7, whether it be G7 or B flat, 7. See, I, there you can really see it because I'm playing on the G now. Now if I go up to the D flat, same scale. Or if I go up to the E, same scale. So those are the three families. Now, they're, how do we find the families? They're diminished chords. You see? <laughs> it's amazing. It's almost like the symmetry within the piano is a lesson about something within the universe. In other words, C7, in this particular symmetrical aspect, relates to E flat 7, relates to G flat 7 to A7, and the same thing continued. Now, like where I go to F7, it's the same as going up a half step. Well, that would be, that would be the one, you know, whatever note is contained in it, you can see the F is in there, so that would be the F one. Okay, so that'd be the F one. And then go up a half step again. Now, I've really lost you this time, so we'll go back and review so you get this. And I'm going to have it printed out for you so, so it's easy to understand. Okay, I want to continue now, but I want to tell you a little bit about this particular scale. And the thing I want to tell you is that the, you have the three families in the dominant category, and you have three families within the diminished category. And that's all I'm going to say, because I'm only going to talk about the dominant families now, because if I put the diminished families in there now, we're really going to, I'm going to lose you. So... There's the C7, there's the, the same scale for the E flat 7. Okay, and same, same thing, you know. So, so the, the C family, the F family, and the G family. If you just study those three and I'll write them out for you, then you will get the idea of this. Now, just to explain how it also works on the diminished chord is this. If you play, if I move this chord, a C7 up a, whole, a half step here in on the bottom I have a C sharp diminished chord so now I would start on the C sharp play the same scale as this one but I'm now starting on a whole step so whole half whole half whole half whole, whole half so like that forms the diminished scale so this is really a diminished scale if you really understand it but we're using it in two different ways we're using it on diminished chords and we're using it on dominant seventh chords if we use it on a diminished chord, it starts with the whole step. If we use it on the dominant seventh chord, it starts on the half step. So here it is on the diminished chord. Here it is on the dominant seventh. That's fascinating and confusing. So we'll try to, we're going to look at this now from the point of view of how do we apply it and make it practical. Otherwise, it's just a theory and it doesn't mean anything. So now we're going to go into the practical application of this scale. Okay, if you're still with me, and this is an unscripted video, I didn't plan anything. I'm just ad-libbing here like if you were in my house and we were, I was telling you this, it would be the same thing. In most of my videos, I have a little bit of preparation, so like I try to perfect them on some level. But let's just say we're taking a C7 we want to do something interesting with it. Well now look at that, look how that uh, scale works with the C7. It's, it's there. So 
See that? These patterns are... So whenever we have a dominant seventh chord now, we can use that scale to get us to where it's going to resolve. Let's say C7 is going to resolve to F. So I might like do this. Just a, a five one. Let's take a two five one. See how that begins to open up your ear to conceive of how to play bebop style. I mean, that's one scale. If you learn it and practice it over and over again and get your ear acclimated to it, it'll open up a whole new world for you, like of like harmonic possibilities. sometimes throw a super low green in there. Now the only difference is this is the half tone whole tone and the super low green is this. So it adds the sharp five in there. Which I, I use the super low green a lot because it's very much like this same altered dominant scale. Now supposing I want to use it on a diminished chord so now I have, let's do this, let's put it into a tune. Oh let's get that right. Sometime my, sometime my prince will come. Now there's the diminished chord, so now there's that scale. See how beautifully it fits, fits the chord? Now here, here it is again, here's the scale. it all the time I've been integrating it with my playing because I practice it enough so I know how to use it whenever I need to use it and you have to develop your ear to hear it and you have to develop the perspective of the intervals and how it is outlined like this you know like or it's really this you just have to see that pattern there that's the C okay now the F is this one right let's look at this there's the F one, and the G is this. You see that whole perspective, you know. And you can see that's really the jazz sound. That's the jazz sound. If it's a diminished chord, Bill Evans used this a lot. You can see that's a, you can hear that, the Bill Evans sound. This scale will change your life if you're into jazz. Sorry, I was stage left. Anyway, thanks for joining me tonight. I know this was just a tidbit. It was unplanned. It was a video I wanted to show you. And I hope you learned something from it. If you didn't and you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. I don't care. If I have two thumbs down, though, I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to, like, delete the video. So, anyway, <laughs> please let me know if you understood this. And I'll make another attempt at it at another time. But until then, I will say in the words of my friend, God rest his soul, Hermie Dressel, I'll say to all of you, swing loose.